A Summary of the Red-Headed League by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Chapter 1 One day, Dr. Watson visited his friend Sherlock Holmes at his home in London. When he arrived, Sherlock Holmes was talking to a man in his living room. The man's name was Mr. Jabez Wilson. Mr. Wilson knew that Holmes was a famous detective who could solve crimes, and he wanted him to solve a mystery. While Mr. Wilson was talking, Holmes did him carefully. He looked at Mr. Wilson's face, his hands and his clothes. He worked out that Mr. Wilson used to be a labourer, that he visited China in the past, and that he did a lot of writing. When Sherlock Holmes told Mr. Wilson this information, he was very surprised, because everything Sherlock Holmes said was true. Mr. Wilson decided that Holmes must be a wonderful detective. Mr. Wilson started telling Holmes his story. He had a small shop in London where he worked with his assistant, Vincent Spaulding. Not many people visited Mr. Wilson's shop, and he wasn't a rich man. One day, Mr. Spaulding showed him an advert in the newspaper for a job with the Red-Headed League. The Red-Headed League found jobs for men with red hair. Mr. Spaulding wanted Mr. Wilson to ask about the job because Mr. Wilson had red hair and the job was only a few hours a week. The money could really help Mr. Wilson and his small shop. That afternoon, Mr. Spaulding took Mr. Wilson to the Red-Headed League. There were a lot of men waiting outside the office, and they all had red hair. But Mr. Spaulding pushed past all the men until they were outside the door. They went inside and met the manager, Mr. Duncan Ross, who told them about the job. The person who got the job would have to come to the office every day between ten and two o'clock. He wouldn't be able to leave the office during this time. While he was in the office, he would have to copy all the information from a large encyclopedia into a book. The pay was four pounds a week. This was a lot of money. Mr. Ross told Mr. Wilson that if he could start work the next day, he could have the job. Mr. Wilson was very surprised but quickly said yes. Chapter 2 The next day, Mr. Wilson bought a pen, some ink and some paper and went to the Red-Headed League. He thought about the job. Could it be real? It seemed foolish to copy an encyclopedia. But, to his surprise, when he arrived at the office, Mr. Ross was waiting for him. So, Mr. Wilson sat at the table and started work. He copied information from the encyclopedia into a book until two o'clock. Then he went home. Mr. Wilson went to the office every day, and at the end of the week he received his pay of four pounds. The work was easy, and he was very content. This continued for eight weeks. One day, he went to the office, but it was locked. There was a letter on the door that said, The Red-Headed League has closed. Mr. Wilson didn't know what to do. He asked the landlord why the office was closed, but the landlord said that he didn't know. He said that he didn't know Mr. Ross or the Red-Headed League. It was a mystery, and Mr. Wilson wanted Sherlock Holmes to solve it. Holmes asked Mr. Wilson some questions about his assistant, Mr. Spaulding. <laughs>
After Mr. Wilson left, Holmes asked Dr. Watson to go to a violin concert with him that evening. On the way, they could go past Mr. Wilson's shop. When they arrived, Holmes walked up to the shop and hit the ground with his walking stick three or four times. Dr. Watson thought this was very unusual. Then Holmes knocked on the shop door. A young man answered, and Holmes asked him how to get to the concert. Did you knock on the door so that you could see the young man who works for Mr. Wilson? asked Dr. Watson. No. I didn't want to see the man. I wanted to see the knees of his trousers, replied Holmes. Dr. Watson thought that was a very unusual answer. He didn't understand. But Holmes didn't explain. He was looking carefully at the different houses and shops behind Mr. Wilson's shop. There was a newspaper shop, a bank, and a restaurant. Then it was time to go to the concert, so the two men left. Chapter 3 After the violin concert, Sherlock Holmes told Dr. Watson that he had to see someone before he went home. There is going to be a crime tonight, Watson, explained Holmes, and it might be dangerous. Meet me at 221B Baker Street at 10 o'clock. Dr. Watson arrived at Baker Street that evening. Holmes was talking to Peter Jones, who was the most important policeman in London, and a man called Mr. Merriweather. Holmes explained to Watson that they hoped to catch a famous thief called John Clay that night. The four men got into two taxis. While they were travelling, Holmes told Dr. Watson that Mr. Merriweather was the manager of the bank behind Mr. Wilson's shop. The taxis were taking them to Mr. Merriweather's bank. When they arrived, Mr. Merriweather took them into the bank and down into the cellar. It was dark inside the cellar, and there were a lot of large boxes. Holmes looked carefully at the floor of the cellar. Then he asked Mr. Merriweather to tell Dr. Watson why the thieves might be interested in this bank. They are interested in the gold in the boxes in this cellar, explained Mr. Merriweather. It is unusual to have so much gold in one bank, and we have been worried. We wanted to move it. Holmes explained that the thieves were going to come into the cellar under the ground from Mr. Wilson's shop. Now there were three policemen waiting outside Mr. Wilson's shop. Holmes and the three men were waiting inside the cellar. The thieves wouldn't be able to escape. Holmes turned out the light, and the four men waited for the thieves to arrive. After about an hour, the men saw something. One of the large square stones in the floor started to move. Suddenly, they saw a hand. The hand slowly moved the stone up and to the right. Then a young man climbed out of the hole and into the cellar. When the young man stood up, Holmes quickly grabbed his arm. It was John Clay. John Clay, your red-headed idea was a good one, but we've caught you, said Holmes. Chapter 4 Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson returned to Baker Street, and Holmes explained the crime to Watson. John Clay had the idea for the Red-Headed League because his friend, Mr. Ross, had red hair. Holmes knew that the job of copying out the encyclopedia was too foolish to be a real job. Clay and Mr. Ross invented the job because they wanted Mr. Wilson out of his shop. Why? <laughs>
Mr. Wilson told Holmes that Mr. Spaulding often used to work in the cellar. Holmes thought that this was unusual. Holmes asked some questions about Mr. Spaulding, and found out that he was John Clay, the thief. When Holmes knocked on the door of the shop, he saw that the knees of Mr. Spaulding's trousers were dirty, and had holes in them. Holmes deduced that he was digging a tunnel with Mr. Ross when Mr. Wilson was not in the shop. When I saw that the bank was behind Mr. Wilson's shop, I knew why they were digging a tunnel," said Holmes. "They wanted to take the gold from the bank. How did you know that they wanted to take the gold on Saturday night?" asked Watson. When they closed the red-headed league, I knew the tunnel was finished. If they took the gold from the bank on Saturday, they would have a day and a.